Thank you, sir. Good for sir. Good for sir. Yes, sir. Please go. Thank you, sir. Mayur, you are a footballer. What position do you play? Uh, sir, I prefer playing in forward mid. Forward. Forward midfield. Forward mid. Yes. All right. Who is your favorite footballer? Sir, Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. And in India? Sir, Sunil Chetri, sir. Sunil Chetri. All right. What is India's rank in FIFA? Sir, at the moment, India is placed in 90, uh, 106th position. 106th. Correct. Now, you are a doctor, aren't you? Yes, sir. Dr. Zarek. And you uh, had led a team, COVID uh, team as a doctor in charge. Yes, sir. Now, are you aware that during, uh, in the peak of COVID, some elections were held? Yes, sir. Where? Sir, I can recall Bihar. Uh, Correct. That's good. Now, what is special, initially there was a speculation that it will not be possible to hold the election. But the election commission did it and they, they did a very good job. What special measures were taken to take care of COVID? Yes, sir. Sir, I think uh, as far as I can recall, sir, uh, there was a proper screening process of testing uh, the voters and also social distancing was maintained. They ensured that whoever was coming uh, to vote, they wore a mask. And sir, sanitizers uh, were provided at the election stations. Uh, so those are the points that I can think of now. Hmm. And any... the special protection of the staff yes sir those were given uh, vaccinations uh, those were in assam sir there was also election sir there are those who were going for duties they were provided with vaccination before those uh, before the elections yeah, yeah there were two other major uh, uh, reforms mm. I can give you a hint, uh, people above 60 were given a special facility. Yes, sir. Sir, remote voting, uh, uh, they could send a uh, postal ballot. Yes, sir, postal ballot. Secondly, to avoid uh, crowding, something was done for the polling station. Uh, sir, maybe the polling station number was increased. You are right. You know all that, but uh, you could not recall. But yes, the, uh, they, these are the things which were done. Thank you, sir. There is another gentleman with the name of Hazarika. Yes, sir. Are you aware of it? He aware of it? He wrote, writes. He's a doctor, sir. He writes repeatedly about northeast and the its relationship with what goes by the name of mainland. Uh, sir, uh, sir, I'm unable to. Recall. Shall I give him the name of a book, Strangers in the Mist? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I actually know, but I am unable to recall All right. the name. Sanjay Hazarika. I had Sanjay Hazarika in mind. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, you have given foreign services your first choice. Yes, sir. So the international relations will be drilled by Mr. Suru. Uh, you have taken anthropology. Yes, sir. I just want to ask you, medicine, medical science is a subject. Yes, sir. Offered by UPSC. You preferred to take anthropology and not medical science. Any particular reason? Uh, sir, while I was, uh, was uh, searching for the optional, sir, I looked at the syllabus of uh, the available optionals. And so the syllabus of anthropology seemed very interesting to me. And I, and I wanted to use this opportunity to explore a new subject and learn something new. You have studied all the while in Assam or have you ever been outside Assam also during your study? Uh, sir, no, I have always uh, studied in Assam so far. What is your hometown in Assam? Sir, Tejpur. Oh, Te Tejpur. Do you remember anything about Tejpur and the 1962 war? Because you are interested in foreign service. Yes, sir. So, Sir, yes, uh, sir, Tejpur is actually, uh, there is a pathway from Tejpur to Arunachal Pradesh. What it, happened in 62? Two interesting things happened. You should remember both. Okay, sir. Uh, Dr. Das, the IS officer, DM, deserted his post and ran away. Okay. And Prime Minister Nehru made a particularly maudlin speech, my heart goes to Assam. People thought that he had given up Assam. Okay. Both incidents took place and caused a lot of alienation in Assam. I'm this is a very old history, you are not expected to remember it, yes, but sir. your first choice is foreign service. So yes, I was sir. tempted to tease you a little and pass you over to Ambassador yes. Saru. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mayur. Uh, assume you get into the foreign service, okay? Yes. You are posted in some country and there you meet some locals and you want to interest them in visiting your home state, Assam. Yes. Sir. What will you tell them about Assam? that they should be motivated to visit it when they come to India. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, 
so first thing that the world knows about assam is tea of assam so probably i can start from there that i say that uh, the tea gardens of assam there is the largest tea garden of asia munabari tea estate in assam the secondly sir i can tell them that uh, the highest concentration of one horn rhinoceros is found in assam kaziranga kaziranga so besides that uh, sir there is uh, the culture of uh, the temple of kamaikha there there is one of the four adi shakti peeths of india so besides this there is the smallest the largest uh, river and island of the world majuli it has a very beautiful and unique uh, satra culture of the uh, that was the vaishnavite movement led by shrimanta shankar dev bhasa so and uh, and the, and lastly Nothing the about society culture yes sir uh, sir uh, lastly the people of assam are very cordial mm. they are very helpful and uh, i think they will uh, enjoy the hospitality of assamese people what is the size of the assamese diaspora abroad uh, sorry sir i unable to okay what is the size of the indian diaspora abroad and indian diaspora includes both nris and pios that is persons of indian origin sir i'm so guess. sorry take a guess One million, five million, ten million, fifty million, hundred million. Take a guess. Sir, What do you think? I, India's population is how much is India's population? Sir, one forty-two crore. One point four billion. Yes, sir. Then what would be the size of the Indian diaspora? Sir, I am tempted to think that it was around eleven million or something. I am not sure, sir. No, it's thirty-one million. Thirty-one million. Okay, sir. Okay, can you name three or four top CEOs? of global companies who are indian i'm sure it's a very easy question uh, yes sir sir uh, so firstly of uh, google uh, sir uh, oh, you don't remember the name of the google head yes sir sir suddenly i have uh, sundar pichai yeah, yes sir sundar pichai okay then and sir uh, yes sir i Come on, you, you can't remember us. you can't remember <laughs> you can't remember okay forget the world of technology how about politics yes sir sir there is uh, the us vice president kamala harris uh, right and uh, uk president of rishi sunak uk president sorry uh, prime minister sir okay rishi sunak rishi sunak and sir there is uh, there was another mp in uh, canada uh, i'm unable to recall the name exactly but sir kurpreet singh or something i forgot the name No, there are two two more prime ministers of Indian origin. Both in Europe. Both in Europe. Leo Varadkar in Ireland and Antonio Costa in Portugal. Okay, sir. I'll look into it, sir. Thank What you. is the importance of the diaspora for India's foreign policy? Yes, sir. Sir, the Indian diaspora is very important because of uh, so. Firstly, it is a source of soft power for India. Those uh, they diplomat the. Uh, the diaspora can help in uh, propagating uh, the indian uh, culture in those areas so secondly they are the sources of uh, remittances to india india is the country with the largest uh, recipient of uh, how much sir uh, they were this year the last year it was 1 billion 100 billion uh, us dollars of uh, remittances uh, sir they can also uh, act as uh, some sort of uh, group which can uh, co cohesion among themselves in order to ensure that uh, the interest of indians are not compromised in that country so those are the points that i can think of now okay uh, india is hosting two summits this year yes. which are the two summits so firstly g20 summit and then there is the sco summit what is the theme of our g20 presidency so the motto of is vasudeva kutumbakam one earth one future one family one earth one family one future sorry sir So, how is the Earth one family, sir? It refers to uh, it refers to building a more cohesive, more uh, unified world rather than the as you can see in the present scenario that the world is highly fragmented into various groups. So, India hopes that it can lead it to joining various countries in one tie. So, what makes India uniquely positioned to bring this unity? Yes, sir. Sir, India has uh, the world at present can be basically seen in two fragments. Basically, the one led by U.S. in the West, and the other is U.S. It, the Russia, China, that thing. Sir, the India uh, has very suitably positioned because India has a very good relation with both the uh, possible poles. Sir, India has uh, good ties with both Russia as well as U.S.A. and India can thus uh, mediate in bringing both the parties together. Especially in this G summit, it is a very good opportunity for India. 
but then we don't have good relations with china so yes uh, sir the relationship of china has been mostly uh, on the border issues but besides there's the trading relation with uh, china is uh, india has one other so are you a votary of the of the point of view that we should not bother about the border we should continue the economic partnership sir no sir border issues are obviously of highest national importance and national interest and at the same time i think that we cannot uh, abandon the nation, the border issue for economic interest both should be carried on in uh, their own uh, interest but with pakistan it's the reverse policy we say forget about kashmir let's do other things yes sir sir with kashmir sir uh, with pakistan the issue has been like uh, the negotiation india has been trying to negotiate for long however the earlier efforts of india has not been successful mm -hmm. and has been interrupted by uh, some terror attacks in india by uh, outfits based in pakistan sir even if we continue in the similar manner sir it's highly unlikely that any other fruitful result can be expected so that is why india is uh, it is mostly up to pakistan to so that they can actually take some solid steps and gain the confidence of not only india but also other nations so know. recently the pakistan prime minister made a peace overture why did we not take it seriously sir uh, sir i think uh, that pakistan needs to take more concrete steps to show to the world that they have actually worked against terrorism and it has been a great concern for india that uh, those outfits based in pakistan they go for cross border terrorism and the states can you name two or three outfits sir i can recall uh, lashkar e taiba and jaish e mohammed and uh, name an outfit which is targeting pakistanis yes sir uh, tehreek e talib uh, tehreek e taliban tp yes sir thank you thank uh, you can i just interject just with your permission yes, yes, in response to a question now mr when he asked you about islam you mentioned kamakya temple is one of the four adi shakti peeths Can yes, you sir. name for me the three other Shakti Peets? Yes, sir. I can. Uh, I'll try. Uh, sir, there is uh, Kali Kali Ghat, and sir, uh, then uh, then one is Kamaikya, and uh, then third one is uh, sir uh, Bimala Temple in uh, Bimala Temple in uh, Puri. All right. And uh, sir, uh, Tripura, Tripura. Tripura Sundari. Tripura yeah. Sundari. Uh, sir, Tripura Sundari is in uh, West Bengal. Look, look. Why I ask you this so question is, oh, you should not fall into the trap of by offering more information, which can lead to questions which you are not comfortable with. Then, normally the tradition is that Sati was being carried by Shiva, Vishnu through chakra cut her organs, and there are sixty-four Shakti Peets. Nobody expects anybody to remember all unless you are a panda. Of sixty-four Shakti Peets, yes, but when you specifically say four Adi Shakti Peets, yes, sir, it leads to voluntary information which might lead to questions which might be. It's very better to say that Kamakya Temple Nilachal Hill is a Shakti Peet. Okay, sir. That's it. Okay, sir. Don't go beyond that. Okay, sir. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mayur Hajarika. Um, you you have written here that um, the solving uh, the Rubik cubes. So when you are a novice, Rubik cubes are very stressful. Uh, sometimes it tests your patience, and uh, when you become a master, then it's no more fun. So so how it gives you uh, that kind of relaxation or uh, the good feeling? Sir, I, as far as I am concerned, sir, even now when I solve a Rubik's cube. i often get into it and spend around one or two hours solving the rubik's cube it's still very fun challenging the trying to uh, beat the time that i have solved it just immediately before uh, hours together you can spend on rubik's cubes yes sir, i i have this habit now even now so i when when i study i keep the rubik's cube away so that i don't uh, get into that i'm getting high on rubik's cubes that's very interesting okay uh, you are from assam yes sir. and tripura meghalaya assam mizoram as you know they are the part of the scheduled sixth states yes sir but uh, there is a sudden new clambering that is coming up from uh, uh, ladakh yes there uh, the native population the major part of the native population want themselves to be included in the sixth schedule yes sir so what benefit uh, would it bring to them because already a lot of development programs and the, the and there a lot of money in the for the different uh, areas that is being pumped in that area so what exactly they are looking for yes sir sir uh, uh, while answering this question you will have to go exactly in the spirit of the schedule 6 yes sir so yes 
so so the cdo6 provides a uh, provides a sort of autonomy to the people of those region hmm. to have an access and to decide yeah. how the resources of the area will be used so as far as uh, the people of the ladakh are concerned so their concern is that uh, the development projects that are being carried out in ladakh that will result in very high rate of uh, resource utilization as for example sir there was uh, this quote who say there i heard this uh, report that they said that they survey pick on like four or five or 10 liters of water per day so the concern is that if the resource, if the development program is carried, is being carried out at a very fast pace mm-hmm. then the water resource utilization will be very high so that the local tribal peoples of the, of that region mm-hmm. they will suffer very harshly so their their main concern is whether the development will be sustainable or not in that region so it is in that perspective that the people of that those region are demanding uh, for a six schedule to be included in the six schedule you are talking of sustainable development and that is you think that the schedule six will protect it for for example assam meghalaya tripura mizoram where the schedule six in operation yes, still tribal population are not so well of the first thing a lot of conflict is also going on and it is beset with problems although i would agree that in assam tribals uh, the national average on the parameters of various things assam tribals are doing much better yes sir but still these areas are beset with problems schedule 6 has not brought anything on the platter <laughs> which possibly could be eulogized then then why the ladakh this clamor and demand is coming up because it may not solve the problems that you are actually looking at okay sir with respect to the schedule 6 in assam so one thing that with northeast sir in particular mm. one thing that i northeast not in time northeast only four six states schedule. yes sir six schedule yes six schedule states. states of northeast mm-hmm. so one thing that can be noted is that uh, the forest cover of those areas are still very high as compared to mainland india yes. so maybe that has uh, has a contribution in developing towards uh, that sustainable development yes yes sir uh, however i would say that the lack of development in the northeast is basically because that area is very highly terrain the hilly terrain has also been very Uh, a very impen- impeding issue also there is the issue of floods in the northeast so it's very common every year people the government invest and then once again they have to go for repairing the next year sir in comparison to that the ladakh people have been already have been already living a very sustainable life, way like they are surviving on 5 or 10 liters of water per day that is that is that is i think uh, that is really uh, a concern for them Uh, and that is why they are demanding for this six schedule okay the people who have not very closely with close quarters studied the problems of the tribals they may not understand it for them the, the tribals schedule tribes are a monolithic group but as an anthropology student you know that uh, there are the hundreds of uh, different ethnic identities among themselves so how the planners can take that into account because you plan one thing and that will be in the conflict with the The, the 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 ideas of the another ethnic group yes sir so how a homogeneity can be created yes sir sir i don't think that we have to necessarily go for an absolute homogeneity i think that the reasonable differentiation among the various the micro planning at one place for the different tribes who may be living in very close proximity yes, and it will lead to conflict yes sir sir i think the way forward is to go for definitely sustainable development however we need to go for at the same time a hand in hand with sensitization and awareness generation among those communities mm-hmm. to make them realize that what is best for their interest so that is very important sir i think one last thing you are a medic yes, and uh, during covid period the india's covid outreach is brought a lot of goodwill for india yes sir. but it also exposed uh, the, the many of our problems and shortcomings so we could be proud of the kind of the good name it brought but yes. what are the shortcomings and the problems that we discovered to our surprise or to our peril if i could use a stronger word yes sir sir my own experience during the covid period sir i have realized the firstly the issue is uh, the infrastructure itself the bed to patient ratio that who has been saying that india is lacking it became very evident during the covid period the icu infrastructure shortage it became very evident mm-hmm. so secondly there was the issue of uh, doctor patient ratio we have always known that the pay ratio is not up to the who recommended level it became but, but dr hazarika in the countries say like the italy or america where the ratio is very high even there we saw the visuals that the absolutely the, they ran out of the Yes, the sir. bed for the patient and icu yes. so the problem was there even where the doctor and patient ratio is very good as well yes sir uh, sir 
there are multiple uh, factors that can be uh, taken to that. Uh, so their research is still going on and uh, some of them suggest that India being a, and some, I, I read a report he said that India has a very high rate of TB and that could have provided some sort of cross immunity to the COVID also. So that is why, uh, sir, in those areas, which Tuberculosis are, providing cross immunity? Sir, yes, I gave across uh, a paper which showed uh, that... You may have read, you are an expert, so... No, there was a paper that. in New uh, England, sir, uh, General of Medicine, I recall mm. that. Yes, sir, sir. It's not confirmed, uh, but uh, it's, it still remains to be seen why Indians, unlike the Italy, those people, Italy and US, there was high, why such a high mortality rate in comparison to India. Sir, so, you are, yes, continue, please continue. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, besides that, sir, India had uh, uh, in the medical sector, sir, besides there was also issue of paramedical stuff and also the oxygen ch cylinders, uh, they mm -hmm. were, uh, generation plans were established only later, only after. Uh, the many problems that you were talking about mostly indigenous in nature, but in the supply chain, for example, things that we had to get from China in emergency, APIs yes, or sir. the kits that is required in their shortage. Your attention did not go to that. Sir, yes, sir. So I, was, uh, I was thinking I'll go forward. But yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you, sir. I, I was very happy with your interview. I okay. leave you to the other colleagues. Yeah, you are a very, very pleasant candidate. Except uh, if instead of keeping your hands like this, if you put them together, they're more relaxed. Okay, and you're very pleasant and charming. Mm, the two things which we advise everyone, master your COVID, uh, master your uh, DAF because it's, uh, every question is asked from here only virtually. Okay, so I anticipate say 100 questions from here, 110 okay, and master n uh, news and current affairs through reading the newspapers okay. thoroughly. Which newspaper do you read? Sir, I am now reading the Hindu and the Indian Express. And when is your interview? Sir, I have not been given you the date. You haven't got the date, so that gives you some time. So, uh, if you are already not doing it, please uh, start a diary. Five items every day okay, sir. from the two newspapers to, uh, collectively, okay, sir. So, uh, which you can up, uh, keep on updating, okay, okay, sir. revising. Yeah. Right? So, if you do these two things, they will be very useful to you. Okay, sir. Do you have any question? Uh, sir, that question regarding uh, why do you want to leave medical, sir? I have been thinking about that question. This question is very common in every doctor candidate. Is every doctor question. candidate is here, every B tech candidate is here, every B candidate is here. We at times we joke that we think that the basic qualification is medical and B tech now for IAS. Don't worry about that. That's, okay. that's comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Everyone knows that uh, IAS uh, is a much superior service than being a uh, doctor in a rural dispensary. Okay. okay. Even if you are a top notch super specialist in a top notch hospital, yes. how many years you would have to wait for? You would do a DM, you would do an MSMD, you would do a MCH, you would do a senior yes. residentship, you would go out for super specialization. You would be beginning your career at 33, 34 yes. and then also it would be hit and miss. Yes. I mean either you are a cardiovascular surgeon or you are a neurosurgeon yes. or you are a hip replacement surgeon. It is very tricky. Okay, I mean, and health deficiency and sanitation problems among the tribals yes. and uh, the, whether the modern medical system can solve them or we should allow them to continue with the, the, their traditional that is a question which you might be asked about that you might be asked so. non-alternative medicine uh, non allopathic medicine claims about that for drug, drug companies pharmaceuticals profiteering lifestyle drugs and the interesting thing is that the tribals are already the blessed with the many good ideas and the some good uh, traditional knowledge which we are not quite sure not backed by the modern the medical science but then that that is very working very well for them so how possibly that can be integrated mm. what were you doing in the last two years after doing your mbbs sir i completed my mbbs uh, i was doing while i was doing internship there was covid so my internship got extended by six months and after that i was doing rural service sir one year rural service as a medical officer and so I was in that medical service uh, till uh, 10 days before the prelims exam. Oh. So I was working, sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck to you. I'm very happy with you. Thank you, sir. All the best, Mayush. Thank you, sir. Indeed, you look like a winner. <laughs> All the best. Thank you, sir. Take Good luck. Care. Thank you, sir.